Hey smokers, drug one here. Uh, I was going to make a video today about uh, doing some stuff with um, Windows 3.1. did involve Windows 3.1. Don't want to give too much away. If we can get this done in time, we might be able to cover it. But um, I believe I've either fried the um, motherboard in this, or I've shot the power supply. So if the latter is true, then that would mean... Um, I'm out of power supplies. I actually have no power supplies um, that uh, are ATX. The only type of power supply I have left is this, which uses this old uh, AT. I believe this is an AT power supply. Um, yeah. And it has to be manually switched on and off. So this is the last one I have. It has some Molex connectors. Uh, ATX power supply in here, I believe, is totally gone. It, um, it sort of powers the thing on for a second, but then it's gone. So the the real goal here, and would actually help for later videos, is that this is actually a Pentium 3 motherboard that we're using for um, DOS and Windows 3.1. This is a Pentium 1 motherboard that originally was running Windows 3.1. Uh, so if we if the motherboard's okay, we can actually switch it over to something else, say the Windows 95 machine for something more period correct and less problematic. Maybe. So maybe we'll just uh, shuffle some things around. Now, one of the biggest problems I've had with this setup is this stupid motherboard right here. This is the motherboard from the very first computer I ever used. I still have it. It's a Pentium 1. And yeah. The problem is, is that it was originally came in a flatbed case. It was meant to sit like this, but over the years, if you look back to my original Ultimate DOS Machine video, I set set it up in crazy ass configurations for a vertical layout, and that would mean that the cards actually end up being sideways and are prone to falling out. So we're gonna try and do something like that again because I don't have another uh, set top desktop style case anymore. I got rid of it years ago. So we're just going to have to use, and I hate to admit it, this case, because this case is the only case I have left. You might think I have a lot of computer stuff, but um, cases? Yeah, I actually have a box filled with motherboards with no cases. So we're going to see if A, this still works, B, the hardware will actually safely sit in these slots and see whether or not it'll actually still start up on this much older and probably less um, reliable power supply. This has got to be one of the stupidest things I've ever tried to do to tear apart this perfect build, but we're gonna have to do it, so let's get started. Alright, so I had a bunch of stuff here plugged in already that I was gonna do the video about, but uh, we can't do that right now. Power supply, as you can see, is a little too small. It was something that came in an old HP machine and just rattles around in there on one screw. Now the weird thing about this is it lifts up a little and you actually slide the whole motherboard and all of its cards out. But this never works. At least I've never seen it work. Something's wrong inside somewhere. tracking it down. Oh yeah, that's right. This card is too wide to be removed in that way. So I'd have to take the card out, and that card is the TV tuner card, so I'd have to take that out. Usually that is the point where I usually call it quits and say, hey man, this just isn't worth it. I mean, I've been working on this for, you know, hours and shit. So that means you got to push the whole thing back in and start unscrewing. So, there it is. TV tuner card. Or, it's really just a composite video in card. There's no TV tuner part of it. And while we're at it, we might as well take out the deck talk card. It's so massive that it's probably going to float around and do some weird things. Yeah, look at that thing. <laughs> yeah, old computer stuff is pretty ugly. Let's see if we can actually uh, pull this out now. Alright, well, it started to come. Now it's caught on something else. Oh, I've wire-tied this motherboard in here. 
That's not a good sign. Okay, alright, so let's keep going. Getting a little farther, we're getting stuck on the audio cable to the CD-ROM drive, not a big deal. Alright, so what's going on in here? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we probably need to unplug everything. Power supply. Now, I haven't tested the power supply on anything else to see if it'll work. But uh, all this stuff is going to have to go. We've got hard disk, we've got CD drive. Let's keep going. We're still going. Oh god! The whole plate came out and you could see through it. This is where we're at. Oh shit! Alright, so this is the Pentium 3 board. I have no reason to assume that it actually is having any sort of problem. There aren't a whole lot of screws holding it in place. There's one, two, three, four at the top. Now this plate here has some hole points. I guess you could put holes in different places if you take the the guys off the board. So we might just do that. This right here is the video card. This is on PCI. But we absolutely need this or we're not going to get our 1024 by 768. This is our aw 64 right here. This is exclusively on ISA, as you can see. So there it is. I think this is ready to be lifted. Oh, nope. We got one, a couple more left here. Okay. So there it is. That's our Pentium 3 build, I think. Yeah, it says Pentium 3 there. So now's the challenge. The challenge is to get the motherboard from the other computer on this without it colliding with any weird stuff inside there, which I think is pretty much an impossible task. I think the other... oh, shit. Yeah, we got a problem here. Um, hmm. May have just wasted all that time. We'll have to see, because this... This is all one piece here. Um, there's no popping this portion out. That's just what it is. Yeah, so that, that literally makes it impossible. So I've just taken this apart for no reason. But what if there's something else we can do? Is there another case we can grab? Is there any other things we can put it in? Or do we have to build another fucking thing out of Legos? <sighs> so now what? Well... I don't have a case. No cases at all are going to work now. But I do have this box that a case came in. I guess I could build the DOS machine into a box. Maybe I should test to make sure if everything plugged into it will definitively work before I start uh, cutting cardboard. Okay, so let's go ahead and start putting this together how it's supposed to be put together. So here we have our PCI and ISA ports. We only have three ISA cards, but we have to be careful with them. This is our Pentium 1. I believe it can function with passive cooling alone. It doesn't get that hard. So what the original case that this originally came in was, of course, a flatbed case, which, you know, we got a box. We could pretty much do whatever we want. The cards stacked vertically like this, and you plug stuff into the back. So here's our first challenge. This is the Dektok card. This is an 8-bit ISA card. If we plug this in here, which is the only reasonable place, it's going to be right frickin' um, on top of the processor. So is that heat going to damage it? No idea. I, never, I think I was able to touch this, and I, it was not a big problem. If I get a fan here, we could just blow the air this way. It wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, probably not safe, um, but the thing is is that the old case definitely allowed for cards this long, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. We're going to have to find out. So that's undoubtedly going to have to be there with some supports, of course, because if I let that sag, this whole thing is going to go like this. This will directly touch this, and that's not good. This is the aw 64 That one's not a big problem. The problem is this. Um, this could probably fit on the bottom. 
gets a little close to the processor there, but it could be on the bottom if we needed it to. Probably for st stability's sake, that would make sense. And then have the aw 64 there, so let's plug that in. Now, I don't know if it's going to freak out, because these are going to be in different ports than they were before. Okay, so those are in. As you can see, they have no support. They have nowhere to, to plug in here. So what do we do? Well, there's Mighty Putty, and there's Legos. So my thought is, is that I will put a Lego piece here. It will support that, put a Lego piece here, and then fill in the extra space with Mighty Putty. It won't be moving then. Do the same thing for this, except uh, probably want to do that right there. And then do something similar for the top card. We're going to have to do all the stabilization on the motherboard itself. How retarded is that? Pretty damn. Uh, but we're going to do it anyway. Uh, that goes there. Alright, let me go get some Legos. Okay, so... We got our Legos here. Well, this is some Mighty Putty. So, top priority probably should be the bottom card here. We really just want it to be level. So if we have Lego there, then line these together. This, this has got to be the dumbest thing I've ever done, but uh, okay. So I'll put the Mighty Putty on the bottom of the Lego. Put the Lego on the board. Do a little squish. Card's mostly solid, so let's do it again on the other side. Okay. Bottom of the Lego. Now, it doesn't have to be Legos. It could be any other sort of thing. I think in uh, an old video I did, an old I used an old capacitor to stabilize this. Or an old backup battery. So that's pretty good. This could probably use a little bit more support in the back. But well, that's not moving. Now, just for safety's sake, I'll put a little bit on top of that Lego in the corner. Right, let's do this. There we go. And then over here. See, that's what we want right there. I don't know why I have already started doing this. I don't know if the board's going to work. I don't know if the power supply is going to work. I'm totally in the dark on this. Just like I usually am, you know, so. Okay, but now these cards are stable. They're not going anywhere. They're pretty solid in the motherboard. So now we just need to worry about this. But that's not a big big deal. We can we can probably take that off for now. The big deal is the big papa, the deck talk card. Deck talk PC. So let's plug this in. Now we're already seeing some problems. I don't know how dangerous it is to put Mighty Putty on top of active ICs, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so now we have sort of a pyramid going up like this. Okay, so what's going to hold up this side? Don't have a whole lot we can do except build up this way, I want to say. Now, here's the problem with uh, mounting putty. If it gets hot, it will emit carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. I don't know if I've mentioned this before on the channel, but I suppose if these start to heat up in any way, I'll just die. I just don't think they're going to get that hot. I think it, you need to be really cooking them. I'd have to put the, the use this stuff as thermal paste or something. Okay, so that doesn't feel good, but... Yeah, that, hey, 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 we got something here, man. We've got some sort of weird-ass Lego shit. But everything is solid in position. This is the first time this has been solid in a while. So... That'll have to do, so let's turn it around. Oh, there's another Lego there, oh, whatever. 
So now we have to plug in the power supply. Now there's a supposedly the correct way of doing this, and I remember somebody was appreciative that I put it in the right way the first try, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to make lightning strike twice, so um, there was supposedly a right way to do this. Yeah, I don't think you can plug that in incorrectly. It, it's sort of, the connections are keyed, so I don't know who can mess that up. I guess if your keys are broken off of it. All right, so this is the start. Powers it on. I'll plug this thing in because I'll deal with the Legos on this later because that's low priority. Okay, so we're almost ready here. So before we do that, of course, we need to plug in the drives. Now we don't need much. Just need to see if this will start up without uh, issues. Okay, so before we start up, we need, of course, an uh, operating system to boot off of here. I'm probably going to plug this in the wrong way the first time. Okay, alright. So that's, that's as soon as it's going to get. Um, I need to plug in some video to see if anything's working, and uh, I.O. VGA cable only comes about this far. Gonna have to turn everything. So it's plugged in to VGA over. Ow! VGA over here. I haven't powered this motherboard up in years. I hope it still works. I wish I had tested it before all of this, but uh, didn't get a chance to, so. Oh, it doesn't power on because I don't have it plugged into AC. All right. Now, I think I may have transplanted a fan out of this into something else. So, I don't know if that fan is still connected inside the power supply. I hope it is. Okay, looks like it. It's on. Motherboard doesn't have any means of telling me whether or not it's on. A beep would be nice. I'm going to have to switch to the other power supply because um, I don't think this one's given anything because before um, this lit, lit up at least and now it's not. The problem is the other power supply is has bare wires on it. So that's, that's great. So we're going to have to do that instead. Okay, so here's the other power supply. This is the switch. I shorted it and put electrical tape over it because I have no switch on hand to properly set that up. So this has all the things the other one did. And, uh, whew, hope this is going to work. Now, this power supply I haven't used for definitely more than 10 years. So this is going to be nasty, I'm going to assume. We want to look for is the light on this. So this is going to start up as soon as I plug it in. God, I have no good place for this. Uh, here. Oh my God! I just have to hold it. Or there, that works too. All right. Okay. Okay. Gonna plug it in. Holy shit, the box kind of collapsed, but it's working. Oh, now, all three lights are not supposed to hold on all the time. I think it's because this is backwards. So. Wait, which way did I have that on? Oh, fuck. Okay, let's try it again. There, better. Now it's only two lights. We've got car detect and power, which is what we should have. But I'm still getting no signal. But it's having some success with the motherboard. And I got nothing on signal. I'm probably going to need a... 
priest. Okay, so I got it powered up. It, the motherboard still works, but um, I'm not plugged into the video card I need to use, so I don't know if we're going to have a problem there. The date is set to the, I want to say, month of 98, the day of semicolon 8, and the year of 55 equals colon. So we don't want that, so why don't we set that to what it actually is? There's no way I can fix this either. I'm gonna have to. I would have to do this every single time because um, this is uh, CMOS battery's dead and it's non-removable. So let's just say it's 1,200. Says I have a floppy drive, but I don't. So I'll just disable that before it yells at me. Oh shit! Keyboard stop working. Balls. I have to short the reset terminal. Got it. SD card adapter. Floppy drive A failure. Will it boot without my floppy drive? Well, it's still working at that point, actually. So I'm going to have to plug in a uh, floppy drive here because I think it's getting hung up on not having a floppy. No, oh, Jesus. Uh, every time I plug in a floppy disk drive, it's always the wrong way. So let's see if this floppy drive doesn't fry the uh, power supply like the other one did. Oh, yep, I plugged it in upside down. Fucking hell. Okay. Floppy drives like normal. Okay, we're good. Memory size decreased. Oh yeah, because I lost power because I needed to plug the thing in. It's not good. It's not getting past this part. Your program caused a divide overflow error. If the problem persists, contact your program vendor. Oh, I think I know what this is. I restarted this many times and forgot how to plug in uh, floppy drives. That was fun. So, um, enough. I've had to do a hardware reboot many times. And I get into the setup, you got to set the date correctly. And then we can boot off the floppy, because we can't boot off the that. Next time and date. Shit. And leave everything exactly the same. Don't need to change anything else. It'll reboot. Oh, hey, we got Windows 98. So since it's not starting up off of the SD card adapter, start up off of Floppy, and then launch the... Uh, switch over to the command line interpreter that's on the drive. Oh, okay. Seems that the command line interpreter is missing. Well, this is exactly what I need to do. Let's go to C, command... incorrect DOS version. So it did find it, so that's pretty good. Um, downside is is that I don't have a DOS floppy disk. I wiped it in order to make a Windows 95 floppy disk. Fuck! It's gotta be something I got. It's another way to make a DOS floppy. Oh, I think it's because this, uh... It's Christmas! <laughs> what happened? Oh my god! Jesus! What? I didn't do anything. I just tried to boot off an MS DOS boot floppy, and it does this. What's happening, dude? Uh, let's try and see if we can have that happen again. Oh my god! All right, let's try it again. All I'm doing is I'm just trying to boot off of a MS DOS boot floppy here. MS DOS six. No, hold on. Uh, setup has found an unupgradable DOS on your hard disk. Well, that's a good sign. Uh, it found my hard disk, and not only that, but it found a freaking... Uh, so, okay, well, let's let's go look for it. Well, there's Duke. There's all my shit. So let's start Windows. Uh, CD Windows. CD... Win... What is it? Uh, 
Win 311. Win. Ah, oh, Christ. Let's, uh... Run our auto exe C bat. And it should load all of our high memory stuff. And now let's type win. What? Oh, because it didn't read from config sys properly. So that means I have to go back to A and auto exe C bat in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell it to... Okay, now I can't read from the drive. Man, I hate this shit. Can you do config sys? Nope. Alright. Whatever. Edit. There we go. Alt F open. A. Dot sys. There we go. So there's our config sys. Can we load it off the drive? It says country1. That won't do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the, the config sys from this computer onto the floppy as, as well as the auto exe c bat. Okay. So edit a config sys. There's our shit. Um, does it know where to find any of that? Probably does. Let's find its auto exe c bat. Now, what we're doing right now, we're, we're modifying our boot disk to better suit our needs. Pretty much want to get rid of all this. No, that's not how it works. There we go. So, since it won't boot off of the SD card adapter, we'll just have a boot, the floppy disk boot, and point it to the uh, SD card adapter, and because then it apparently works. Let's restart this bitch and wait. So thus far there's nothing wrong with this computer except it does not want to boot off of the SD card adapter. Which I can't really say as I blame it. Hey! That's a good sign. It's now starting up off of ours. We got high mem in there. The error with the CD-ROM. Not a big deal. Okay, perfect. So let's go to C. Win. Windows. I don't hear any audio yet. I do have it hooked up into my headphones to see if I can hear it. We might be stuck because I have the wrong video card drivers. I can move the mouse. Shit. I stopped recording because I thought it wasn't going to work. Oh my god! We have full resolution? We have audio, we have, um, I fixed it, it works, um, and it has full resolution, I don't know how it has full resolution because uh, I'm on a totally different video card, maybe it's because I have the video card all plugged in and it's happy about it, but, uh, holy shit, it works, it works exactly like it did before, with sound, so while we're here, how about I just do what I was going to do originally, and uh, do the original video idea, okay, so this is the, uh, old Draga one camera and uh, if we power this on I have it plugged in with wires oh god I can hear myself uh, the reason I can hear them oh it's really hard to do this and hear yourself uh, let me just unplug the audio okay anyway what I was doing there was I had the uh, uh, this plugged into the capture card in the uh, Ultimate DOS machine, and its audio feed also plugged into the sound card, so I could hear that coming through the sound card. So, uh, that's working, or at least the audio is working. So what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to open the capture card stuff. So, I don't remember where that is. Video for Windows. VidCap. Here we go. Moment of truth. The working directory is invalid. Oh god, what is my working directory? I have no idea. Might have to manually hunt that down. Because we're booted off a floppy drive and the paths are probably kind of messed up. Now the other thing we're missing is um, 
there were other drives up here, extended partitions on this drive, that it can't see because it's not booting off of it. So that's actually where some of our stuff is to make this work. That's where I think I installed some of the video for Windows stuff on the other extended partitions. And since those are not showing up for some reason, uh, we could be stuck. I'd have to reinstall video for Windows on here, and I don't know where that software is. So, I mean, thus far it's working, and the sound card is working, so that's fine, I guess. But we're still kind of stuck because it's looking for under D, it's under Win Video. So let's see if I can wait long enough and see if it will boot off of the hard disk without having to have the assist here. Okay, now I'm just going to wait for it. It's going to take a little long. So the disk I was just using to boot up the computer was a DOS 6 disk, not 6.22, which is what we have, um, just DOS 6. So, and it thinks it's a non-system disk, so that sort of messed up my plan. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the proper disk and boot up off of MS-DOS 6.22. And from there, we will uh, hopefully have support for the extended partitions that the SD card has. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so now we're starting up off of the, uh, it's the DOS 6.22 upgrade disk. It's probably going to pitch a fit right now. Okay, not really really what I wanted here, but uh, that's fine. I just have to quit out of this. So now we're at a prompt. So we want to see if we can go to C. Alright. Can you go to D? Oh, that's not a good sign. Um, okay, brr. 6.22. Okay, so... What we want to do is do exactly what we did before. Yes, overwrite. Yes. And so that should make it so that it'll boot up our system. But we're still running on the boot disk software, so this doesn't really help. So, all right, so. We're on the proper interpreter, so let's open uh, F disk. No F disk, huh? Got, we've got F disk on here. We do. Okay, so let's display some partition information. So we do have an extended DOS partition. You can see that it's two gigs in size, but I don't know how to access it. And it says there's no file system on it, so that could be a problem. Uh, so, set active partition, only startable partition is drive one and set active, okay. So hopefully we can just start up uh, the computer with this, so let's uh, try and do that. So now it's going to load config sys and auto exe cbat that are copies of the ones that are on the main drive. It detects the AW64, which, you know, isn't really a surprise because it worked before. Some of the auto EXE CBAT is broken because of some of the lines in it don't specify what drive they're in. Okay. Yeah, it takes a minute for it to start up. Unfortunately, we can't see the other drives. I don't know what I did to make that work. I think the only way it'll work is if it boots off of the drive in question, but it probably can't because of its weird partition scheme. So, I don't know. I mean, this works, but my files are kind of gone. If we look at the... I only have 153 megs free. I don't think that was enough for all the video stuff I wanted to do. It's all over on the extended partition. So what I could do is I could plug the drive into another computer and copy the files where they need to go, and then we won't have a problem, or I start this up off of the motherboard that's better, then copy the files. Either way, it's not going to be pretty. Or I need to reinstall the uh, video for Windows, and without video for Windows, I can't um, use the capture card software. 
So, fuck. I'll have to figure this out. Okay, so after a long time of copying files, we'll see if this works. It doesn't detect any of the hard disks. Why did I notice that earlier? So what I tried to do is I tried to do a uh, total disk image copy, or direct raw copy of the um, bootable drive, and uh, it didn't really work out too well because the drive that we're booting off of, that boots off of on this, is a, 100, a fake 128 gig SD card. And so anytime you plug it into any machine, it thinks that it's copying 128 gigs when you're like doing a DD or something. And right around sector 12 million 330, it uh, will lock up on you because that's about the 4 gig mark. That's how big that drive actually is. But they modified the headers or something on it to make it look like it's 128 gigs. But the thing is that we only partitioned the drive out to... Um, like no more than three gigs so it worked but the problem is, is that it only works with this so yeah it's really tricky shit right now and right now it doesn't even detect this hard disk so I would have to find a hard disk that works and then do the copy again or fuck I don't know what else to do uh, guess why it wasn't detecting the drive just guess. Oh, it's just because it wasn't set to master. Yep, that was it. And there it is. It's detected. Now just watch this bitch boot. Let's just press escape. Well, it got detected, but it's not booting. Well, got another idea. We're going to see if any of the files that we... Um, copied over are working. So now we're going to try booting off the floppy disk, which already has all our cool stuff on it. Now, will its auto exe cbat work? Hmm, no. Can't find that because that happened before. Sector not found, reading drive C. Ignore. Ignore. That is not good. That is uh, Satan himself talking to this thing, man. Um, yeah, it just says clock over and over again. There's a lot of weird shit. Like, weird patterns and stuff like this and... It's still going. Oh my god. This looks like a... This looks like it would belong on Dana Oct 1's channel. Okay, so, may have come to a solution. I haven't tried starting this up yet, but here you can see we have a different SD card here. It's a 1 gig. I basically took the DOS startup partition from this. This is our 128 gig fake. Um, I took the just the startup partition um, and put it on here. Just the startup partition. And then... As a secondary drive connected, we're going to have this, and this has the secondary partition, the extended partition, off of this. So the method by which I got that on there is a little bit unreliable. I may have to copy it again. But long story short, we have just our startup and our extended over there. We're going to have two different drives instead of partitions on this weirdness, and maybe it'll decide to boot up off of this since this is more normal than this. So. Uh, let me just plug everything in here, and uh, we'll get started in a sec. Okay, so we're not even going to try and start off of the floppy. Hard disk one detected. Are we going to... Do I have two? We have two hard disks. Okay, very good. Um, probably do want to enter setup just because this thing totally messes up the time every single time so everything else correct and then the cursor always jumps to there and we have to force restart it on the motherboard still not wanting to boot off of uh, a drive here it doesn't look like so we will have to use floppy disks to put this whole all these pieces back together 
So restart it one more time. It's going to boot off the floppy, and then we're going to have a successful boot into uh, Windows 3.1. Except Windows 3.1 should be able to see this other drive here. If not, then I don't know, dude. <laughs> this is the only way I could think this works with this motherboard. It's reading off of the the drive. My clone worked, so that's good. Yeah. There's all there's all our stuff. Clone successful. We still do have audio. Let's see how hot this processor is. 44 on the heatsink fins. So it's probably more on the processor itself, but that's not enough to make me worried. Okay. Now what we want to go do is look and see. I should just be able to click that and find out. File manager. We have a D. We have the D drive now. Okay. That doesn't actually help me. That's exactly the same stuff that's on C. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to unplug um, D here, the secondary drive, specifically copy just the partition of the extended, and then um, it should have everything we need. Because when I plug the D drive, the secondary hard drive, into my Windows 10 machine, it says that the, the only thing on there is the extended partition. So well, I'll see if I can just copy over the extended partition without it croaking, because I don't see it any other way because it's the exact same stuff here but C and D are exactly the same and this is from a failed direct copy so I'm surprised this stuff is even visible in here and just for the sake of argument let's uh, I'll just try and launch this again okay okay so I'll go do that and uh, I'll be back and uh, hopefully it doesn't fuck up so I went out on a limb here, and uh, what I did was connected the drive to Linux and made not one, not two, but four partitions, something that uh, FDisk cannot do. They don't go above the 2 gigabyte limit of FAT16 as a drive size, and it doesn't go above the partition size of 500 megs. The only thing is, is that... Uh, you can't do that in FDisk, but you can do that in Gparted. Currently, not only did I do that, but I also moved all the files that were on the extended partition on our original drive and put them on those extra partitions. Now, they didn't, all that data didn't fit on one partition. I had to put uh, most of the stuff on one and the rest on a couple others. So we got D, we've got E. Oh, okay, that didn't work. Okay, well, we do have D. What's on D? Okay, that's really not a good sign. It, for some reason, it picked the third partition for this stuff. E, how about F? G? E. C. Okay, well, I got Doom and Quake, but that's about it. So that didn't work. Let's go to F disk and see what happened. So take a look here. It does list the partitions D, E, and F but it doesn't have the fourth one. It only has three of them. So, what do we do? Uh, we go to five, two, and then set active partition. Only partitions on drive made, okay. Display partition information, four. So, for some fucking reason, it thinks this is non-DOS. I guess it's FAT16 that fucking Windows... Oh, God. That Windows um, formatted. Um, yeah, so everything below it is okay, except for this. So, this was actually made by Linux, and that works. But this was formatted by Windows 10 because it was an accident. Jeez. And I guess maybe it's because it's 457 megabytes, not 450. So I don't know. I'll probably have to delete that partition and put it back. Or just format it again in Linux. Um, or, instead of that, we could just forget about that. And then, just totally throw that out the window. We'll use third as our drive. I'll move the Quake and Doom to here. And then uh, I'll put the Win video in here. And that should basically make everything work exactly how it used to work. <sighs> oh my god. So instead of doing exactly what I said I was going to do, which was to reformat it and copy everything back into wherever it was, 
Instead, I plugged it into Gparted again, and there was, for some reason, a flag added to the FAT16 partition on the volume partition, whatever you want to call it, second, which had everything I had just copied, but it wasn't detected by FDisk. I checked the flags for that partition, and Windows 10, although it properly formatted at FAT16, had added the drive flag, the partition flag, LBA, which stands for Logical Block Addressing. When I turn that off, I get everything. Everything works. So apparently Logical Block Addressing is not a good thing to have on, and if you try to format your partitions with Windows 10, they might not even show up at all. So make sure that you know what's going on there. So here we have WinVideo in our D drive. So what does FDisk look like? I have no idea. It's probably going to be some sort of a horror show. Um, five. Now we have four partitions on uh, volume two. So that's perfect. So let's select two. Let's uh, display partition information. So we have... These have volume labels and these ones don't. So F and G don't have, but it does go up to G, which is pretty remarkable. Um, so G. So invalid drive specification E. So E, we got some stuff going on here. So that's our, our third drive. So we've got C, D, and E. Do we have F? C, format F doesn't work. So it probably doesn't go out that far. I don't care. Those are the only drives I really care about using. So C, we want to go to win or not. I'll we'll start up Windows. Okay, audio is still working. You can't hear it. I don't know if I've hooked up to the thing, but uh, you get the idea. So will VidCap work now? Why, well, yes, it does. It uh, comes right up, actually. So, video source. Want to go to composite? Okay. So right now we're not. We don't have anything coming into it. So remember the camera I had from before. I power that on. Now we're going to start sending signal to it. I don't know how to get it into like test mode, so I can sort of see. Save a single frame. Let's actually put it in third. Cannot write to drive E. Test B B M P. Root here, we got a bitnap file, and it's just a white blank square. How the fuck did I get this working? Video source, composite, NTSC, preferences, video, frame rate 15. Okay, we're still getting nothing. Now, I don't know if that's because the card isn't working or what. I think I stopped it. Well, I'm going to refer to the last video where I did this to see if I can get it working. So this is this is correct. I thought that we were having some sort of driver issue because I was having a problem where it would stop detecting something. So something's happening here. Set to no preview video. See the cursor stops flickering. Preview video, it starts flickering. So the question is, why is it only picking up white and nothing else? I don't know. Could be bad capacitors on the... Uh, the capture card, I have no idea. Just for reference, it can play back video, so... Well, let's make sure the DeckTalk card works, because I... I don't... It's... So DeckTalk still works. Um, can't hear it, but uh, that card survived this move. I'm not sure if the, vid the, the video capture card did or not. Okay, well, uh, looks like we accomplished most of what we set out to do. Um, what I'm going to finish up with here is uh, cutting this thing into a better box for it. And uh, then uh, probably some other time, probably next week in part two, we'll go ahead and tackle uh, trying to get the video spigot to work again. I'm not quite sure what happened. I think it's because we're not booting off of the right drive. We're booting off of the drive A, and it doesn't like that. I don't know if it added any lines to config sys or what, but yeah, it's not in there. All right, so this is what we're left with. This big honking thing and those, so. So, you're probably wondering what you're seeing right now. You're seeing a working setup. What did we change? Well, this is the same a Pentium 3 motherboard that uh, we originally had in the original, like when we started this video. Suddenly it didn't work. The problem was the power supply. 
Um, but I had a good idea trying to get it over to um, a more period for correct motherboard. The thing is, is that this motherboard made everything magic. It had a whole bunch of PCI slots, it had a whole bunch of ISA slots, and it had the ability to boot off of the weird setup, which was my oddly, strangely partitioned DOS partition drive. It only seemed to work with this motherboard, or anything just kind of newer. This is a Pentium 3 motherboard again. And as you can see up here, I'm using a mechanical hard drive. Um, this is a clone from the little micro SD weird thing that I had before. This is a clone of that, and it works. We have all the hardware here. Audio would work too if I had that turned on, but uh, yeah, this is the highest resolution we can get this at. Mouse is not working right now, but I can go up here. And knock this down a little bit. Ends up going a little bit smoother, the lower resolution, obviously. So, yeah, it's kind of annoying. Everything works perfectly, but thankfully, there's nothing wrong with my hardware. The older motherboards were keeping um, this from booting. The other motherboards were keeping the, our capture card from working. So that's it. What's next? Well, I don't know. We're kind of stuck here, and it's really annoying. I'm sort of forced into using this motherboard that's too new. If I use something older, my weird partition, partition scheme might not work. And again, this partition scheme didn't work on two motherboards. So, man, I just don't know what to do. Maybe I'll see if I can find another board that's more manageable than this. So, next time, uh, if you're tuning into this kind of multi-part series, if it exists, we'll see you in part two with the proper build. This is Drog1, sounding off of hours and hours and hours and hours and hours wasted building old computers. I'll see you next time.